Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. Our topic today is sharing and reusing and um, saving in different ways your lesson plans in forethought. So good afternoon, everybody. We actually have three people on the line. I didn't know Jenny was going to join us till the last minute, so I don't have her picture up there. But um, Joel has advertised himself as training specialist slash nerd. Yes. So I made myself training specialist slash geek by comparison. So uh, Joel Adkins is on the line with us today. Say hello, Joel. Hello, Joel. Hello, Joel. <laughs> And Jenny Strock is also on the line, although I didn't get her picture up there. Sorry, Jenny. That's okay. We're good. And you get to tell us we'll, if we'll you be are. Better next time, Paige. Okay. Are you on the nerd side or the geek side? I don't know. It's I like coffee, but I also wear sneakers. And you it's have dogs. T-shirts so. and dogs. So I'm. Um, so she's I'm a geek. Have to do a percentage next time. Yeah. How? What? What's our percentage of geek versus nerd? So anyway, that's who we have on the line today. Um, as we go through today's session, if you have questions, if you'll look in your control panel on the screen where you logged in, you'll see an option there for questions. There's one for chat and there's one for questions. Be sure you use the questions one. And Joel and Jenny are going to try to answer those questions as we go along. And then there may be some times where we pause and take a little time for them to read some questions out and answer them as a group. So if you will put your questions there, that would be greatly appreciated. And let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So we're going to talk about saving, reusing, and sharing lesson plans. And there are multiple ways to do that. We're going to talk about ways to move your lesson plans around within your own planner. Um, there are, well, there are multiple ways, but the two that are built in, and I'm going to tell you the differences and the benefits, are using the Send Lesson 2 button and using the Copy Wizard button. And then we're going to talk about the Activities tab and what you can do to save your lessons and reuse your lesson plans from there. And we'll also talk about team planners and shared planners, the pros and cons of both, and different ways that you can utilize those in your planning also. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to jump in to a teacher account. And I have some lesson plans in here so I can look at Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and I have lesson plans written. But I'm going to say, for example, we had an inclement weather day today, and I need to move this lesson somewhere else in my planner. There are multiple ways to do that, but the easiest, if it's just one day, and I'm going to move it over to tomorrow, um, the easiest way is to do it from right here within my planner. There is a button that says send lesson to, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that hopefully you can see that button a little bit better. It looks like two pieces of paper. And when I click on send lesson to, it gives me a calendar and I can say I want to move this to Thursday because we were out. Now, one of the drawbacks of using the send lesson to button is that you have to have already told your planner planner what you teach on the day that you're moving it to so that it shows up with this little box here that says English 1. And the reason that it already knows that I teach English 1 on the 19th is if you'll look over on my calendar, I've already clicked on that day and made it bold, which stamps it with the course and whatever template I have in for that day. So it already knows that I'm teaching English 1 on the 19th. So it gives me that option and I would just click, yes, I want to put it in my English one course and I would say, okay. And when I do that, now I can navigate to the 19th and there is the lesson that I moved over. It has a blank template at the top because I had already stamped my date. I had already visited it. I'll go to Friday so that you can see any day that's bold already has the courses and it has whatever template is built in by your district or that you have built in by using the set as default text for entry. So if you have a, a template in your system, either that you have put in by using default text or that your district has put in, whenever you click on a day in the calendar, you're going to get that information stamped on that day. So I had already visited the 19th. It stamped it with my course and my template. And then when I used the send to button, 
that added the teaks up here at the top in my box. It added the lesson itself, which starts right here, and it added the attachments that I had for my lesson. So all of that comes with the, the send to button. So teachers ask all the time, can't I just highlight everything and copy it and paste it on another day? And the answer is yes, you can do that. But if you do it that way, you'll have to go back and add the teaks in separately and you'll have to add the attachments in separately. So depending on how many resources you have attached, depending on how many teaks are tied to the lesson, it may be faster just to use the send to button. The send to button gives you this stuff up at the top, this empty template, but I can delete that that fast. So to me, it's faster to go ahead and use the send to button and delete out the extra template at the top than it is to highlight, copy, paste, manually add in the teaks, manually add in the attachments. So that is one way that you can move your lessons around within your planner. Now, I sent that lesson to the 19th, but it did not remove it from the 18th. So if I leave here and go back to the 18th, that lesson is still there. I have the same lesson plan on both days because I copied it or sent it to another day. There is another way that I could do it. Let's say I thought we were only going to be out for one day, but now we had another inclement weather day and I need to move this lesson to the 20th because that's actually where we're going to be teaching that. We're out for two days. And you may be moving lessons for multiple reasons, not just inclement weather. I'm just using that as an example for right now. So another way that you can move your lessons is I'm going to go up to my views at the top and the default view is to view by day or plan by day is what it's called. When you have, when you click here, you have three options for viewing your lesson plans and the default is plan by day, which is going to show you a single day and it's going to show you all of your preps. So I have English one and then I have English two and I have an advisory period. So it's going to show my three preps for each day. The other plan option that you have is to plan by course, which is really the one I would use as a teacher. I would put my English one hat on and plan for the entire week. That was Monday for English one. Here's Tuesday for English one. Here's Wednesday for English one. And I would plan my entire week one course at a time and then come up and switch to my other prep and plan my whole week for that other prep. The third option that you have is called View Weeks Plans. And I always uh, want to point out the difference. This is one of those Sesame Street moments. One of these three things is not like the other. So these both say Plan By, and this one says View. And that's because the week view is not a fully functional planner. If you look up at the top now while we're in the Plan By course, you'll see all of the tools that you have to add things into your planner. When we go to view weeks plans, that is much restricted. I don't have nearly as many options. I cannot add images. I can't add hyperlinks. I can't even add teaks and I can't even view my teaks. So the weeks view is really not designed to be a place where you write your planner. It, it's just a place for you to get a snapshot of your week. But the other thing that it's good for is when I'm in the week's view, I have a button up here that's called the copy wizard. So I'm going to click on copy wizard and talk about the different ways that you can move things around. I can copy content in my planner and I'm going to do that in just a minute where, where I take something and I move it to a different place in time. Um, I can copy instructional days from year to year, which sounds like a fabulous idea, but I'm going to warn you not to do that because it's going to copy every day exactly as it was last year into this year or this year into next year, whatever you decide to do. Your six weeks are not going to end at the same time. Your holidays are not going to fall on the same times. It is not going to line up the way you want it to. And you're going to spend more time cleaning that up than you would if you just copied a week at a time as needed and put them in the right places. So I'm going to I'm going to warn you off of that middle option, but we're going to look at the third option right now, which is shift lesson plans a day. So instead of copying like I did from Wednesday to Thursday, I'm actually going to shift my lesson from Thursday to Friday and leave Thursday blank. And this is 
this is the option I would probably use if I had inclement weather days. And I know a lot of our schools had to do it at the beginning of the year this year because of Harvey. Um, so it, it actually allows you to move them over and you can move them more than once. So I'm going to choose shift lesson plans and say next down at the bottom. And I'm going to say I want to move the 19th. So I select that date. And it tells me that it's shifted it. And everything from that point forward goes to the next day. So if I had planned my entire year and I shifted everything over one day, that last day of school would fall outside of the instructional calendar. So you, if, if I'm only moving one day and I haven't planned next week's lessons and I can look over here and see that I haven't because they're not bold, then it would move what I have on the 19th to the 20th and anything that I had on the 20th to the 23rd. And that would be all because I don't have anything else in there. So I'm going to go ahead and say finish, that that is in fact what I want to do. And so now you can see that Thursday is now blank and Friday has the lesson plan that I moved over. So I shifted my lesson plan over from Thursday to Friday. So two different ways to accomplish the same thing. The first way I actually copied and sent my lesson from Wednesday to Thursday. And then the second way, I sh so that I had it in both places, it's still in Wednesday and it was in Thursday. So I had the same lesson duplicated. That's by using the send to. The second method actually moved the lesson rather than just copying it and shifted it from Thursday to Friday, leaving Thursday blank. So it depends on whether you want to show, I had something planned for Wednesday, now I'm having to do it on Thursday, or I'm just going to shift everything over and leave Thursday blank. Either way is okay, there's no right or wrong, but um, those are two different ways that you can move your lessons from, from one day to the next. Okay, Joel, are there any questions at this point? Joel or Jenny? No, there, I think we've answered just quick little questions, but that's... Okay, very good. Well, then I'm going to talk about moving a larger chunk of lessons. So um, let's say I did my lessons for this week and I had my whole week went really, really well. So well, in fact, that I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to teach this lesson next year. Or maybe I'm going to come in next year and go back and grab this week. But um, I'm going to shift a whole week over this time. And I'm going to go back to my view weeks plans and back to the copy wizard. And this time, instead of saying shift lesson plans a day, I'm going to say I want to copy content in my planner. Again, this is going to leave it where it is, but also put it in another location. So I can click on that button and say next, and I have two choices. I can copy one day at a time or copy a whole week at a time. And this is the method that I would recommend most often for using your lessons from a previous year. So if you want to say, I'm going to go back and grab the first week of school from last year because I do, you know, most of my first weeks looked similar when I was in the classroom. I did some assessment. I did some getting to know you activities. I did some reading comprehension stuff. And so I could use that same week again and just make a few minor tweaks. And this is the method that I would use to do that. So I'm going to click on the copy wizard and then go to copy week and say next. It automatically selects the week that I'm on, which in this case is the week I want. So I'm going to leave it that way. But if I wanted to go back and say, well, actually, I want to grab that first week of school, I could come back here and grab that week if I want to. So whatever I need to copy, I can navigate through and select the week that I want to copy. I'm going to, while it's selected, click on my next button down in the bottom right hand corner. And then I'm going to move it somewhere. It automatically moves it over a week because it's not sure where I want to go. So it just gives me that as a starting place. And then I can use my arrows to shift through and say, I know that I want to teach this next year, but I'm going to start my school year with this, this unit. Um, and so I'm going to go over here and put it, I'm going to use my first week as my getting to know you stuff. And I'm going to put it on the second week of school next year. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in my planner for next year and click next. 
it's going to give me a confirmation telling me that it's moving Monday, October 16th of 2017 to Monday, August 27th of 2018. It gives me that little confirmation and it lets me say if I want to include special entries. That special entry is anything that I have in my planner that's not an actual course. Like in my planner, I have this advisory period where I meet with kids for like 30 minutes every day. If I had lessons in there, I could move those forward also. Most of the time, I'm not going to want to do that, but you have that option. And I'm going to click the finish button. And now it jumps me forward in my calendar. You can see over here on the left hand side, it moved me forward to the place where I copied to. And now I have that whole week's worth of lessons moved in my planner. One thing to notice as a difference when I used the send lesson to button, so let me go back to today. I should have it'd been faster if I had done a year backwards and then gone forward. Um, so if I go back to today and I go back to a specific lesson, when I use the send lesson to button, I have to have already told it. Let's say if I, I'm going to try to send this to the 30th. You can see over on the left, I have not clicked on the 30th yet so it doesn't know that I what I teach on the 30th and so it tells me there are no plans on this day it hasn't been stamped with my with my courses it hasn't been stamped with my template so it won't let me put it in there until I first go close this click on the 30th let it stamp my courses and my template in there then I can go back to the 16th and say send to now it knows that I teach English one and it will let me do that. If I use the send lesson to button, which is within each course, and that will send one course at a time, not your whole day at a time, then I'm going to have to go out and click on the day I want to send it to and stamp that day first. If I am using the copy wizard, let me close that. If I'm using the copy wizard, I can move a day or a week without stamping anything. So I don't have to go forward. I'm going to say I want to put a day on to November 1st. November 1st hasn't been um, visited yet, so it hasn't been stamped. It doesn't know what course I'm teaching, but I want to say I'm going to copy a day. I'm going to copy the 18th and put it on the 1st. And it's going to let me do that. The difference is it copied my whole day. So it copied English one and English two and anything I had in my advisory period. If you want to copy just one of your preps, you have to use the send to button and that requires you to stamp the day first. If you want to copy the whole day, including all of your preps, then you can use the copy wizard. So you have to decide, is it faster to copy the whole day and delete the lesson that I didn't really need? Or is it better to use the send to button, go out and visit the days first and then come back? Okay, um, the next option that I want to talk about is at using the activities. Hey Paige. Yes, sir. We did have one question and it's, it's okay. more of just a curiosity, but in the copy wizard, why would there be an option to copy instructional days from year to year? That was actually a request from a specific district that we built at their request. Oh. And now I regret that. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but I've spent some time with people trying to clean it up. And so I just, I warned people off of that. But it, it was at the request of a customer. Okay, thank you. So they, they had a specific need and I don't remember, I wasn't, part of the company at the time. I know I've, I've asked the same question and I don't remember that part of the answer. Okay, so let's talk about activities for just a minute. Um, I have my lesson that's here on the 18th. I'm gonna say this is today's lesson and I taught it in class today. It was very successful, the kids liked it. I know that I want to use this again next year, but I'm not sure when yet. I'm not sure how it's gonna fall in my units or whatever. I just want to have access to it. I don't want to lose track of it. And I am not a calendar savant. So remembering what date I taught it on is not going to be the best way for me to remember. So I want to save it a different way. 
I'm going to click on the course itself so that I get my course tools. They only show up when you click here. And I'm going to click on this icon that looks like a gear with a plus sign on it. And that's my activities button. Now, one nice thing about Edgeforia is if you're not sure what some of these buttons do, buttons do, you can float your mouse over them and it'll pop up what we call tool tips, which is a little text box that tells you what that button's all about. And this one says, add this lesson to my activities. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to give me a pop-up box that says it's been added. If you don't see the pop-up box, that means that pop-up blockers are turned on on your computer. It's not an Edgeforia thing. It's either an operating system thing or a browser thing. So if you don't get this pop-up box, you need to talk to your technology people about how to turn those pop-up blockers off because it won't work without the pop-up. So I want to make sure that I see that pop-up and say, okay, but it doesn't really look like anything happened right now. And the reason is this whole time we've been on the My Planner tab over here on the left-hand side. Now I want to go to the My Activities tab and click there and I'm going to see an activity for English 1 up here. When I click on activity for English 1, there's my lesson about irony and the short story, The Necklace, that, that I had taught on today. So this is the one that I wanted to say. It always names your activities, activity 4, and whatever the course is. And I don't like that. So I like to come down here and grab the title or topic off of my lesson itself and paste it in up there so that that is now the title. And I'm going to save it. I have to force it to refresh. But now you can see that it's called Short Stories, Irony, and the Necklace. That's a way that I can remember what the lesson is if it's got a name. I'm not going to remember October 18th, but I'm going to remember it was my lesson plan about the necklace and I'll be able to find it that way. Um, I could take off short stories. I know the, the necklace is a short story so I could take that off of my name and that shortens it makes the title a little bit easier to read so you can kind of play around with that and see um, what you want to do with it. I'm also going to look at the teaks here because as I went through and selected my teaks they're um, kind of in a random order because I was just picking them as I saw them. But when I'm looking at the lesson and trying to save it as an activity, I want to save it based on the primary teak, the one that is most closely related to this lesson. So in this case, I would say that 1.7a is the primary teak because irony is the primary element of this story or this, the reason we're covering this story. So I'm going to right click on that teak and I'm going to say set it as the primary learning standard and that moves it up to the top. Whenever I'm saving activities, I just want to make sure that that primary teak is in the top position because that's how I'm going to find it later on based on that teak. So again, I would save it. I can make any changes that I want to here. If I wanted to tweak it a little bit, I could, but you'll notice it came in saved from activities with the teaks and with the attachments. So again, that's one click to get all of those resources tied together in a way that I can find them next year. I can save it and have it for myself. And I'll show you what that looks like if I went back to my planner and I'm going to go to next year and I'm thinking I'm, I'm back in my short story unit and I'm thinking I did a lesson last year that I thought was really good and it was something about irony. I'm going to go to my activities. Oh, there it is. I can see the lesson. Yep, that's the one I wanted. And I can see that it's tied to Teak 1.7a. I'll go back to my planner to the day that I want to, to teach this on. And I'm going to click on my box to get my curriculum. And I'm going to come over here and find 1.7a. When I click on 1.7a, I can see my lesson show up in the resources box and it tells me that it's my activity and it has the title that I gave it. So that's a way that I can find it. I can go look for it in my My Activities tab and then navigate to it by using the primary teak to find it. Then I'm going to double click on it and it opens up in a full lesson preview where I can see everything about it, teaks, attachments and all. And I also have this button that says use in plans. Hey, and I can just click one button. 
Paige, the pop-up okay. pop doesn't appear for it. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all didn't see the pop-up. Um, let me do this just real briefly. I can't, I, it won't let me change it. I'm sorry. It pops up with a, a box that um, shows the full lesson. And in the upper right-hand corner of the pop-up window, there's a button that says use in plans. And when I use it in my, when I click on that button, you can see that it dropped that lesson in. Just like when I copied, I have to go up and delete that stamped template out of there. But that takes me a second. And now I've been able to navigate back to the My Activities tab, find the lesson I wanted to use, and then open it up from down here. I'm going to go in really quickly to our Help section and go to the My Activities um, article that's there. So what, and I'm, I'm hoping that you guys are familiar with our help section. When you click on the help icon from anywhere in our, in our system, you'll get to our online help. And if you go to forethought and then forethought for teachers, there is an, an article out there called my activities tab. And it walks you through everything that I just did, saving the lesson, using that little gear icon, navigating to the My Activities tab and renaming and making sure your primary teak is set correctly. And then the reason I wanted to go here now is that it shows you what that pop-up looks like. So this is what that pop-up box looked like when I clicked on that activity. Actually, you double click on it. When I double clicked on the activity, I see this pop-up window that has the Use in Plans button. So that was the piece that you guys couldn't see. And thank you, Joel, for pointing that out to me. Um, and then after that, the only option that I want to talk about is publishing. So I'm going to come back here. I've used it in my plans. I cleaned up my template. I'm ready to teach this lesson again. It will always be in my resources as my activity because I saved it on my activities tab. But if it's a really good lesson and I feel like other teachers might benefit from it, I also have the ability to publish it. There's a button here that I can click and say publish. It gave me a pop-up window again saying that it will be added to the tree as soon as it's approved. And then that's it. The only thing that changed is the icon over here. So before it was just um, the little cog, now it has the pencil on there because I can still edit it, but I'm waiting on it to be completely published by my curriculum coordinator. They'll get a notification that I've published a lesson. They can go in and look at it. And if they decide that it's worthy of being on the district scope and sequence, then they'll hit the publish button and it will go. And then any teacher that clicks on Teak 1.7a will see that lesson as well. Right now, because it hasn't been published to the uh, to the district curriculum yet, I'm the only one who sees it. And I would again click on Teak 1.7a, and it shows up down here with the words "My Activity." If it does get published by the curriculum coordinator, other teachers will see irony in the necklace, but it will not say "My Activity" for them. That's just something for me to know that I'm the one who wrote that. So sometimes it's a good idea to click through and see if anyone in your district, like I can see that my district has added two different lessons in there for me. They're not mine. I didn't create them because they don't say my activity, but I can see that some lessons have been put in there tied to Teak 1.5a. So you can see if your district has anything in there by clicking on the Teaks and seeing what shows up in your resources but then also anything that you put in your activities tab will show up in that resources. And Paige, I was going to add on to that. In my previous districts where I worked, when I went to conferences and I found like these really cool activities for my teachers that I wanted to share with them, instead of like putting it in a Google Doc or typing up a newsletter or sending like a really long email, which I still did that in some ways, but I would do that uh, activities like I would create the activities in forethought and publish them for my teachers and then let them know hey you can find all these activities now inside of forethought you don't have to go hunting for them you don't have to go looking in a network drive they're already built in you just click on those primary teaks and you'll be able to find those 
Awesome. That's a really good example. And I wanted to show, uh, you reminded me to show that it, in addition to going to my planner and clicking on a lesson and creating an activity from an existing lesson on an existing day, I can also go straight to my activities tab. So if I'm one of those teachers and we all know somebody like this who goes to conferences and gets really fired up and I know I want to teach this, but I just don't know when or where, but I'm going to write it up now. I can say I want to create an activity. I can tell it what course it's related to. And it's going to give me a blank page that looks like a lesson plan, but it does not have a date. So I could come in here and say I want to write a lesson plan about irony and the necklace. If I had just gone to a conference and learned about this idea that I'm going to use and then I could write my lesson plan here and I can add my teaks, I can add my attachments, I can do everything I would with a regular lesson plan. I'm just not assigning it to a date yet. I'm assigning it directly to my activities tab where I would be able to find it later and use it when I get to the, the proper point in my scope and sequence. So you don't have to start by writing the lesson plan and making it an activity. You can do what Joel did and make the activity to be used in a lesson plan at a later date. So it goes both ways. Right. Thank and, you, Joel. Yeah. And so it was really great because like uh, my job was always like digital learning, instructional technology, and I'd go to conferences or the service center. Uh, one of the tools that I used was iTunes U. Um, and in iTunes U, you can, if you have an iPad, you can search for uh, TASA. TASA has a great list of resources by courses K through 12, and it's all um, classes that are taught with activities tied by TEAK. So I would go in there and find specific activities that my teachers, my struggling teachers were having. I'd find specific activities that they could use. We were doing iPad rollout, so I would use the same type of apps and create those activities for them tied to those teaks. So then when I went to go work with those teachers, I was able to show them, here's where you can find all these resources already in the tool that you're going to use to write your lessons. Which is awesome. Time saver. Absolutely. Okay, any other questions about activities before I move on to our final way of sharing and saving? We don't have any coming in, but I'm still watching. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, so I want to talk finally about shared planners and team planners. Those are two different ways that you can work with other people. So far, we've been talking about working within your own planner, ways to share your lessons or move your lessons to other parts within your own planner. But you might also want to work with your teammates, and we do have some options for that as well. I'm going to start first with the shared planner, and I think there are sometimes misconceptions about what shared means versus what team means. A shared planner is where I am going to share my planner with one or more people, and that's pretty much it. It's not really a collaboration. So I always think of when I first started my first year teaching, I had three teachers on my team who were wonderful to me. And at the beginning of each unit, they would come and set a pile of folders on the corner of my desk and say, copy whatever you want. And I would, and I'd give them back their folders. And that was, that was it. Then I was on my own to make my decisions about what I wanted to use, but they were just giving me some things. And that's what a shared planner is all about. It's someone giving someone else access to see those resources. So I'm going to say, for example, that I am um, the mentor in this situation, and I'm going to share my planner with a newbie teacher. So I'm going to go down to the bottom left-hand corner where it says change my settings. And this is also where you would go back if you needed to edit your schedule. But the two things you see here are my schedules and share my planner. And I'm going to choose share my planner. And then I'm going to go in and find the teacher, the newbie teacher that I'm going to share with. And there she is. So I'm going to say, if I want to add another teacher, I can. If not, I already have that one teacher that I want to share with in there. You can add and remove teachers as you need to. One of the things you need to know about sharing your planner is that the owner of the planner has complete control and only has control of that planner. So nobody can 
unshare that planner but me so if Paige says I don't want to see that planner anymore she has to actually come say that to my face and ask me to unshare that planner with her because she doesn't need to see it anymore um, they can't do anything to change my plans I'm just giving them a peek and I have all the control so best practices if you're sharing planners in your district you need to remind everyone at the end of each school year to unshare the planner before they leave for the year that way, if anybody moves away over the summer, you're not stuck with shared planners that don't belong anymore. So you share them at the beginning of the year, you unshare them at the end of the year, and then you can reshare them next year if you need to. Once I've selected all my people, and it can be one or many, I'm going to say I'm done and return to my planner, and that's it for me. As this teacher, Teacher 45, I am done with sharing my planner. They can do whatever they want from now on. So I'm going to switch over and now I'm logged in as the teacher who received that planner and let me refresh and there's teacher 45's planner that just got shared with me. So as a teacher, I can click on teacher 45's planner and I can see those lessons that teacher 45 just put in this week and I can say, hey, that's pretty good. I think I want to teach that same lesson. Now I'm clicking here. You'll notice I'm not getting a flashing cursor. I can't type anything, I can't change anything, I can't do anything that would impact that teacher's lesson plan at all. The only thing I can do is these two things at the top. I could print out a copy of this lesson for myself to use while I'm writing my own lesson plan, or I can send this lesson to my own planner. So I'm going to click and say I want to send it to, to, to the same date, I'm going to send it to Wednesday in my personal planner. I'll send it to English one and say OK. And now remember, I'm in as as Paige Parker. Now I'm not in as teacher 45. When I go back to my lesson planner and I go to the 18th, I've got my big template at the top of it. And this is an icky template. But if I delete out all of the template stuff, there's that lesson plan that teacher 45 created and shared with me through a shared lesson planner and I copied it into my planner. Now that I've copied it into mine, and you'll notice I'm on my lesson planner now, I'm not on teacher 45's anymore. Once I copy it into mine, I can tweak this lesson. I can I have a flashing cursor now, I can make whatever changes I want to. So theoretically, I have all of these teachers who sh have shared with me, I have three different teachers, I could copy all three of their lessons in and I could delete all but the objective and the warm up from one and then I could delete everything except the assessment part from another one and then I could keep the bulk, the materials in the process from the third. And so I could piece together the lesson that I want from these three teachers who have shared their planner with me. And I think of that as the same way I did with those teachers who shared their folders with me. I copied everything and then I piece together my own lessons based on the three different versions that I saw from them. So you can do the same thing here if someone shares a planner. Again, I cannot get rid of this planner. It's here, it's shared with me, it's going to show in my list until teacher 45 goes in and removes me from her share list. So I have no control over a shared planner. It's going to have that golden color that my planner has, but it has this is, I think, the cuff of a sleeve. Somebody's handing me their planner, so they're sharing it with me, just letting me look at it. And I can see everything that's there, but I can't do anything except print or send a lesson to my planner. The second option that you have are team planners. So I'm back in as Teacher 45, and I have a couple of teams. I'm going to set up another team here just to walk you through the process. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and I can say I want to create a new team and I'm going to call it high school English because I want to show that in two different options I have set up an English one planner and an English two planner which are team teams based on specific courses but I can also have a team planner that has all the courses in it you can set it up whatever way works best for your your team I'm going to say next and then I'm going to add in those people that are I want to have on my team. So Paige is one of my team members and 
I'm going to say teacher 20 is one of my team members. Let's put 20 in there and see what we get. So that's going to be my team. I could add more people. I can add more people later if I want to. You can always go back and add and remove at any time. One thing that's different with shared and team planners is a shared planner, I'm just showing you what I have no matter what it is. In a team planner, we need to have the courses in common. So I have to go and tell it that I'm going to add those courses in. And I'm going to go to high school, language arts, and I'm going to add English 1. And then I can go back and add another course. So I'll add English 2 and English 3. And then I'll add English 4. And if I was a department head, I might want to set up a team this way where I could put some things out there in a team planner that my department could use. If that's all the courses that I have, then I can say that I'm done and return to my planner. And now you'll see I have this high school English planner right here. There are a couple of differences between a team planner and a shared planner. One is that a shared planner is that one directional from the sharer to the sharee only. And a team planner is collaborative. So when I click on the box, the course box in a team planner, I see this icon that we haven't seen before. It looks like a piece of paper with pencil on it. Whenever you see that pencil, that's an edit icon. So if I want to check out and write in this lesson, I have to say, check out this lesson. And then I have to click down in the bottom. And now I have my flashing cursor and I can start writing my part of the lesson plan. So one at a time, each member of the team can click on the checkout button and make their changes. When I'm done with my part of the lesson, I'm going to click the save button. That checks it back in and now that pencil is back up there and somebody else from my team could go in and work on their part. Now, I have on this one day, English 1, English 2, English 3, English 4. While I have English 1 checked out, somebody else can be working on English 2, 3, and 4. So in a four prep planner, I can have four people working on the same day at the same time. They just can't be in the same course. I could also say, okay, all of your English 1 people, I'm going to do all the objectives. Joel is going to do all of the warm-ups and materials. Somebody else is going to do the lesson process. So I can go in and click on the 18th and do my part and then when I'm done and the pencil is back, Joel can go in on the 18th and do his part and then he'll save and the pencil will come back and the next person can come in and do their part. While I'm doing October 18th, those other teachers can be in other days. We just can't be in the same course and the same day at the same time. So it's not like Google Docs where everybody can be in, but you can have that collaboration. Another difference between the team planner is based on the possibility that we may not have common planning time. Elementary usually does, and so they may not need this feature, but secondary usually does not. And so if we're all doing pieces of the weekly lesson plans, we might need to communicate about that. So we have a discussion board, and I can go and say, I'm going to write a new thread that um, is called, Are We Done Yet? And that's going to be the discussion. Then each person can go in, and I'm going to reply to that and say, All objectives are in. And I'll sign it so that they know who that's from. And then the next person who comes in could reply to that and say, now the warm-ups and something else is done. So each person could respond when they had done their part. And when everybody has responded and said that they're finished, then I can go back in and reply to that main one and say, okay, to copy. So now once the team leader or whoever has said we're okay to copy, then every teacher can start putting those in their own personal plans. That's the, the go ahead, the green light that we are completely done with these lessons. You can use this discussion thread however you want to. That's just one example. But I wanted you to know that you do have the ability to pop up a discussion thread that all of your team members can see from any computer that they happen to be working on because it's all via the internet. 
once I have gotten the okay that it's good for me to copy my lessons, I'm going to go to the week view. So view weeks plans in the team planner. So I'm going to say view weeks plans in the team planner. And there's a button that you won't see anywhere else. It's only on the week view and it's only in the team planner. And it's a one click. I want to copy this whole week into my personal planner. So everything that we had done for English one is going to copy into my planner because I have an English one prep in my planner. Everything that we wrote for English two is going to copy into my planner because I have a prep in my personal planner for English two. The English three and four lessons, anything that they wrote, that's not going to copy into my planner because I don't have a prep. I don't have a block in my planner for English three and English four, so they're just not going to copy. But any blocks that I have that match what's in this team planner, when I click that one button, all of it is going to copy into my personal planner. And that's an important step because when your appraiser comes to your classroom and they're going to do a walkthrough, they can click on forethought and they can see what lesson plans you have in. What they're going to see is your personal planner. They're not going to know to look in your in your team planners or which team planner to look in. So you want to make sure that you copy it and what you have in your personal planner reflects what you're doing. Also, when you plan as a team, um, you know, I may have homework and differentiation as part of my template, but I probably am not going to do that with my team. We're going to plan together on these other elements, but I'm going to set my homework assignments and my differentiation strategies for my kids based on what their needs are. And that might be different than what some of my teammates do because they have a different group of kids. So I'm going to copy in the parts that are done and then I'm going to finish the parts that are specific to my students. And that needs to happen in my planner. So I want to make sure that I use that um, copy week from the team planner. Um, and come over here and click on a day. I've got something stuck. Um, and I'll have I'll be able to go in and say I want to copy the week. And with that one button, click and it'll copy everything into my planner. Questions about team planners and shared planners. We, we've been answering some of the questions. We're getting awesome. uh, some clarification on a question that came in. Okay. I don't know. Well, are there any questions in general? There was a question about, there was some confusion, I think, in one district about forethought teams and aware teams. Um, you can use your forethought teams and aware for team assessments, but that doesn't mean your assessment scores are going to show up in your forethought planner. That's not correct. Same. Yeah, that, that one doesn't have, they don't communicate with each other that way. No. Uh, you can use the teams that you've set up and aware for team test, but that's never going to mean, you, well, at this point, it may. It's mean, about assigning tests, not about getting data from the correct. test. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, it's so not, that is a that's a good distinction to know, and and so there is probably some concern about setting up those same teams. You you don't want to share the data, and and that won't happen. Right, that's a different setting altogether, and so the we advise the person who asked that question to contact training. Very good. Help. Yeah. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to go back to the help section again just to remind you that we do have um, articles on everything that we've talked about today so um, we've talked about the my activity tab we've talked about sharing lesson planners and team planners and um, I believe under I don't know if it's here or under entry options it's under entry options there's some information about moving your lessons around. Paige, one of yes. the questions, and this is the one we were getting clarification on, and Joel and I neither one really understand what she's talking about. She said, Tracy asked, um, where does the teacher find that discussion thread button? Okay, good question. It is only okay. in it's only in a team planner. So okay. when I'm in a team, any team, it doesn't matter which team I'm in, um, and I go to a day or I, 
really any view up at the top i will see that discussion thread i okay. do not see that in my personal planner because i don't have anybody to talk to in my personal planner but if okay. i'm in a team planner and i won't see it in a shared planner either because the shared planner is really not about collaborating or discussing it's about look at my stuff and i'm done with you now right, um, right. so the team planner is where you'll see that discussion thread and i just click on any of my teams and it'll show up there at the top. And if I went to the week view, it's still up there at the top of the week. Okay, perfect. Got it. Thank you. All right. Well, we are a little early on time, but hopefully we had some information to show here that was new or at least clarifying for you. And we have, again, that information out in our help section that you can go in and, and watch videos or look at articles and learn more about it. If you have any other questions or you think of questions after the session is over, you can email me at page, P-A-I-G-E at edgeforia.net, or you can email us as a group at training at edgeforia.net, and somebody will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you, Jenny and Joel, for all of your help answering questions. And I hope y'all all have a great afternoon. Thank bye you, bye. everyone. Thank you.